Chairman Pitts, uh, members of the Appropriations Committee, um, thank you for allowing me to introduce uh, Mr. Musk. I uh, met him for the first time today, but have been working with his staff now for probably over a year, um, as have some of you. Chairman Davis and I are carrying some legislation that would assist uh, this gentleman and his company in what they want to do for Texas. Um, I'm going to let him really lay that out, but I, I just would ask you to uh, uh, listen to uh, his testimony and what he wants to do for us in Texas and uh, how we can partner with him to revitalize um, our space industry. It is um, a really a pleasure for me to introduce uh, Mr. Elon Musk, um, who is the uh, president and owner of SpaceX. Um, and as well as Karen Schenewerk, I think I did that right, Sharon, um, who is his counsel and assistant. Um, and you're going to hear some pretty exciting things about uh, what can happen in Texas, as you've been hearing this morning as we were watching uh, some of this from my, my office. Uh, but again, thank you for giving us this opportunity, and we appreciate uh, the, the time and attention, and particularly when a lot of you all want to be at home on Friday with your family. So uh, thank you all for allowing me to testify and, and to be part of this uh, really important project that is uh, uh, something great for Texas. Musk? A lot I want to tell you, I was watching your recent launch uh, to the space station and your successful launching and your s successful docking. And uh, uh, I was very thrilled to see that. Thank you. You would introduce yourself and absolutely. All right, well, um, Chairman Pitts and members of the committee, thank you for having me here. It's an honor to be before you. Um, we've um, actually had SpaceX operations in Texas for for quite some time. In fact, from almost the beginning of the company, um, we have uh, our rocket development facility uh, near um, near Waco in, in McGregor, um, and uh, it's it's gone it's gone very well. And um, because in, in part because that's gone so well, it's, it's led us to think well we should we should probably have a launch site in Texas. Uh, people have been very welcoming, uh, very supportive of, of our rocket developments for quite some time. Um, in, in fact, we've got uh, a couple hundred employees uh, in, in Texas already uh, at, at that facility. So uh, just to talk a little bit about the history of SpaceX, we're about 10 years old. We're actually approaching 11 years old. Um, we develop rockets and spacecraft, um, and uh, uh, have now, uh, as, as you mentioned, uh, completed our fifth flight of our Falcon 9 rocket, which is a, a very large rocket. It's uh, sort of about a million pound thrust level. And to put that into perspective, it's about four times the thrust of a 747. Um, and, uh, and then w w we have our Dragon spacecraft, which has completed its fourth flight and its third uh, docking with the International Space Station. So N NASA selected SpaceX as the primary means of transferring cargo to and from the space station. Um, and that's uh, we've been able to execute that duty and complete uh, all of the missions to date. Um, NASA has also selected us to, to um, upgrade our system to carry astronauts. So, as, as you may be aware, the United States currently is dependent on the Russians to transport astronauts to the space station, which is an unfortunate uh, circumstance and something that needs to be corrected as soon as possible. Um, and uh, uh, our, our system. It should be ready to, to transport astronauts in two to three years. Uh, we want to uh, make sure that we've done everything possible to, to make the rocket as reliable as, as, as it can be, make the spacecraft as reliable as it can be, do many flights, iron out any issues before we have uh, astronauts on board, uh, but it's looking quite, quite promising for the next two to three years to, to make that happen. Um, and then we also intend to, to carry both, uh, both astro you know, astronauts for NASA and, and for other countries, as well as um, uh, private uh, citizens to space, and, and in the long term, our goal is actually to make dramatic improvements in the cost of space flight, and to ultimately make it accessible to to almost anyone that wants to go. Um, and in, in the very long term, um, the, the, and the reason I actually started the company was to advance the uh, advance space technology ultimately to the point where we can send people to Mars. Uh, I think that'll be incredibly exciting. And it seems like that's kind of what where we sh where we we should have been going after the Apollo program. You know, I just think it's um, it's 
a bit sad that uh, we sent people to the moon in 69, and then we lost that ability. And then with the space shuttle, we could only send people to low Earth orbit. Now the space shuttle's not flying, and that's just not a that's not a good path. Um, and I don't think we want to tell our kids that you know the, the uh, 1969 was a high water mark. I think that's a terrible thing. So. The goal of SpaceX is to, to try to reverse that trend as much as we can, and I think we've made decent progress in that direction. Um, now, w one of the things that we think is uh, important along, along those lines is to establish a commercial uh, orbital launch site. Uh, so, <clears throat> and, and just so everybody knows, this, this will be the first uh, commercial orbital launch site in the world. Um, so there's, there's Cape Canaveral in the U.S. and there's, there's Vandenberg, um, there's Wallops and there's a few other things, but, but those are those are government launch sites, and and, the, and, and they have a, an important role to play. Uh, but it's also important that there be a commercial orbital spaceport, just as there are commercial airports. You know, there, there's a logical role for uh, air force uh, airports, and there's a logical role for commercial uh, air, uh, airports, and the same applies to to spaceports. And you may have heard some talk of spaceports before, but that, um, or commercial spaceports before, but those are suborbital, essentially where you go up and, and you fall right down. And we're talking about something that's that's really the big leagues here. This is this would be kind of a commercial version of, of Cape Canaveral. Um, uh, so it would be uh, an historical first in the world. Uh, it would be of a, a very great uh, significance uh, both to the uh, the local economy as well as to um, you have to, to, to the world, really. Um, the, it, it's worth noting that, that Cape Canaveral or the Cape Kennedy, that, that whole center within Florida, uh, I'm told it's the, the largest um, tourist attraction in the state of Florida besides Disney World. And have, they have millions of visitors every year to, to Cape Canaveral and Cape Kennedy. Because um, it's very exciting to, to watch a rocket launch. It's, uh, it's really one of the most exciting things you can possibly do. So I'd really recommend it. Um, and anyway, that, that's what we really are, are thinking about um, establishing uh, near, near Brownsville. Um, we've, we've worked a lot with the various uh, federal and state uh, regulatory agencies. It's all, it all seems to be progressing pretty well. Um, and uh, we, uh, we're, we're optimistic about, about make, we're making this work um, uh, in, in Texas near, near the, in the Boca Chica area. So it's, it's looking quite, uh, quite good. Um, we're, we're, so any any support uh, that uh, the, the, the Texas that Texas can offer would, would obviously be helpful in, in that direction. Uh, we are looking at other potential launch locations, um, in, in uh, continue, expanding on our activities in Florida is one, uh, Georgia, uh, Puerto Rico, and there are, there are a few other possibilities. So uh, it, it's not it's not for sure that it would occur, but but I would say uh, Texas is probably our leading candidate right now.